Dr. Porfirio M. Brescio lecturer this year, Rami, as he is known to all of us nationally, and to many of our international guests, Dr. Roxas. Fourteen years ago, during his term as the Society President, Rami decided that the Society hold a scientific meeting independent of the annual surgeon's meeting to showcase the many advances and developments in our field of specialty. It was also decided that this meeting should have a keynote lecture named in honor of the first Filipino parliamentary surgeon, Dr. Porfirio M. Brescia. Regarding the choice of the first Porfirio M. Brescia lecturer, the decision was easy. It should be given to the first local graduate of colorectal surgery. And we've met him uh, a while ago, and that was Dean Alberto B. Rojas. Fast forward 14 years, it has come full circle that the person who conceived this lecture should be the recipient of this unique distinction this year. So you may ask, what took so long? Well, very simply, Rami has just been busy all these years. He was busy plotting the course and writing the next chapter of Philippine political surgery. Let me give you a brief narration. Early on, Rami incorporated endorectal ultrasound and colonoscopy into the clinic program. He later added laparoscopy, and he was also the pioneer of the multidisciplinary team meetings that we are doing for rectal cancer. Eventually, because of all these innovations, the one-year training program that defined the early era, myself included, became a two-year program. Enhanced recovery after surgery or ERAS is another concept that he introduced in the last 10 years or so. Oh, and did I forget to mention, he was the first surgeon who performed the first robotic rectal cancer resection in the country. So the present landscape and practices of Philippine colorectal surgery, as we are all part of it right now, are all the results of his trailblazing work. In one of the movie trailers you might have been familiar with, it says, you don't get to 500 million likes without making a few enemies. Well, in Rami's case, I will modify that to say that you don't get to where you are without encountering some adversaries. And uh, for, to counter these adversaries, I think he should have a good buffer. And Rami did. He had the best sidekick in town, and that was me. Rami was always the wise statesman, and me, the fiery sidekick. The two of us became a formidable team during the early 2000s, and during one of the international meetings that we hosted, Dr. Samuel Tai, many of you would have known, a colorectal surgeon from Malaysia, approached me and said, Robert, this is a wonderful meeting. And he added, you and Rami work really well. That's something that we all have noticed. And coming from him, I think that is the best compliment you can have. As Rami likes to say, we're like Lennon and McCartney about our partnership. But I say, he's the Batman, and I his dependable sidekick. Today, we honor this great statesman in Philippine colorectal surgery. He is the present regent of the Philippine College of Surgeons. He was the past president of the Philippine Society of Colorectal Surgeons and currently the medical director of the Healthway Cancer Care Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, our 2024 for and ratio lecturer, Dr. Manuel Francisco Onyanga Rojas.
would like to thank um, PC, PSCRS President uh, Antoine Lopez and the rest of the board for awarding me this, this great honor. I'd like to also acknowledge the presence of our uh, very esteemed Dean Alberto Rojas and uh, Associate Dean and Associate Director Arnold Crisostomo, my mentors. Um, to our foreign guests, welcome. If you find the sound system a little uh, flaky, that's because this was originally used by General Douglas MacArthur uh, just before World War II. And uh, if you smell a little smoke in your room tonight, that's probably from his pipe. If you hear some footsteps outside running, that's probably from a Japanese soldier doing a banzai attack. Anyway, um, Uh, I entitled my talk, uh, Our Quest for Excellence, Building on Mediocrity. And um, before I say that, as usual, I have a few disclosures because uh, some of my talk is very reminiscent and it might um, be a little insensitive to some in the audience if I touch on some schools. I know that Angkor is very rapidly uh, UP Maroon, even oozing out of his Facebook. But anyway, so I have past affiliations with the three most contentious schools in the country, which means I'm neutral, please, and uh, very conflicted about it. But I'm very honored to to be giving this lecture today. And as Robert said, we we purposely did this le this this memorial lecture the first time we, we conceptualized the the Congress. Um, for those who don't know, for our foreign vets, uh, our guests, um, um, Dr. Resho was a graduate of the UP College of Medicine. He took his general surgery in UP, PGH, and a postdoctoral degree in proctology in Temple University. He developed the UP PGH Division of Colorectal Surgery and also served as his chair. Um, he is considered the father of colorectal surgery in the Philippines. And unfortunately, when I entered the division, um, I had never met him. I probably was the, the first faculty member who had not been under his, his tutelage. Uh, I think he epitomizes excellence in one way, not only because of what he did, and he did a lot, but if you look at uh, Google, if you Google his name, he's still there and the books and articles he wrote are still available online. He co-founded the PSCRS in 1969 and became its first and longest serving president. So again, his, his whole body of work somehow helps define the word excellence. And when I was asked to give this lecture, uh, and I, I uh, reflected on the word excellence. Um, I remember a friend of mine, a high school friend of mine, coming to me one day. He's a doctor also, and he said, Rami, how did you do it? You used to be so mediocre <laughs> when you were in high school. And I, I, I know he was right. Um, he was partly right because, and I'll share this with you, and I've never shared this with anyone in public, uh, I lost my dad when I was eight in a paper, actually this is the, the newspaper article there. And of course, losing a father does something to your sight. Uh, he was also a, a very established banker on his way up, uh, which is why they could afford a private plane that eventually brought him down. But what my mother did was she would have these little clippings of what he, he did and what he wrote. And he kept, she kept it in an album for her sons to see. And so I would look at them because that was my only connection to him. And there was something he wrote uh, when he was college. It was a, he was an editor of the school paper in Ateneo. And I'll quote it now because it stuck to my mind when I was in high school. He said, someone somewhere has remarked that what we are is God's gift to us and what we become is our gift to God. There is more to this action, I think, than would appear at first glance. It gives significance to our lives, to our every action. We have been given life in order that by living it, we may give it back, improved on its divine giver. 
Our earthly discipline consists in developing what we are, God's gift to us, and what we become is our gift to God. So I carry that with me even as I struggle with my own identity. Um, this is him playing football, and if you look very closely, <laughs> he got scored upon. He's the goalkeeper and the ball right, right through his hands. And I followed his footsteps in the football team of Ateneo, and we were the last <laughs> in, the, in the competition. So I learned very early that number one, you can't win without teamwork, and you have to develop a good team. And number two, you deal with losing by brushing it off and toughening up. Anyway, um, fast forward to today, I'm just sharing with you. This is my nephew, and uh, he and uh, his brothers and, and my, some of my sons, we, we raced through soccer, and we, in the last championship that was won by Ateneo, he scored the winning goal. Uh, and there he is celebrating. And it dawned on me as we were training them in soccer that sometimes it takes a generation to build a champion team. So anyway, uh, still, soccer is a, an outlet. And if you're mediocre as a soccer player, you're still mediocre. Uh, I, I got very close to my grandfather because uh, of the absence of my father. He was the longest serving senator in the country, very patriotic. De devout and incorruptible. His name was Lorenzo El Tagliade. To the foreigners, we call our grandfather's Lolo. And he used to let me recite a poem which he himself would say to himself during the Japanese occupation uh, before MacArthur took back the Philippines at this hotel. And I'll read it to you now because some, I, sometimes it can sound very relevant still. Uh, whatever it is, including the U.S., by the way, whoever wins the elections. It's entitled, God Give Us Men. God give us men. A time like this demands strong minds, great hearts, true faith and ready hands. Men whom the lust of office does not kill. Men whom the spoils of office cannot buy. Men who possess opinions and the will. Men who have honor, men who will not lie, men who can stand before a demagogue and damn his treacherous flatteries without winking. Tall men, sun crowned, who live above the fog in public duty and in private thinking. For while in the rabble, with their thumb worn creeds, their large professions and their little deeds, mingle in selfish strife. Lo, freedom weeps. Wrong rules the land, and waiting justice sleeps. And I saw my grandfather live this poem in his own life. On the top left, you will see him uh, with the late President Marcos, who he helped re-elect. But when, he, when President Marcos declared martial law and incarcerated Nino Aquino, he was the lawyer for Nino Aquino, and and became the leading opposition figure. This is him with Ninoy's mother on the day that Ninoy died. Uh, this is some, some of the things he did when he was beyond 86, being arrested with the police right in front of my eyes, and being gassed and holding rallies. And this is uh, President Cory Aquino. Um, of course, much has lapsed in terms of that idealism through the years, but um, he lived it. I tried to live it. This is me joining one of those rallies when I was young, very obscure, very mediocre. And I, I realized, just looking at him, that I could not be like him. Uh, there was excellence before my own eyes, but I couldn't be a politician. I couldn't be a, a lawyer. So I chose what to my family was the less common uh, path, which was medicine, and I decided to study in uh, what I, a city boy, thought was the most provincial place I could be, which is in Cavite. And this is De La Salle University, and you have these old pictures here. And I took my surgery residency there because I wanted to be in that area, serving uh, the provincial people in, in, in Cavite. 
until I uh, taught there, until I got the idea that I wanted to become a better teacher and take colorectal surgery fellowship. And so I, I applied in uh, PGH. And I remember Armand asking me in our interview, why are you applying in PGH? And I nervously said, sir, it's the best program in the country. And Armand's words still ring in my ear because he was laughing. He looked at the other consultant and said, yeah, but it's the only program in the country. <laughs> and so I entered the Division of Colorectal Surgery and there were four consultants. Um, Dr. Uh, Maxano, Dr. Gutierrez, Dean Bert, um, Rojas, and Armand. And I was fortunate enough after the um, training that they, they, they thought that they could endorse me uh, to the University of Minnesota with Stanley Burke, Goldberg and uh, Manny Balcos, who's in the middle of the lower picture, as well as uh, in the Mayo Clinic with, uh, of course, the very prominent uh, Thai uh, surgeon, Santa Pivak Bones. And when I went there, I realized after my training that there was still so much to be learned that we were quite far behind in colorectal surgery and in need of, and I wrote it down in my head, endorectal ultrasound, endorectal physiology, neoadjuvant therapy, which was just starting, sphincter preservation, which we had 60% of our cases then were all abdominal perineal resections, and laparoscopic colorectal surgery, which was just starting. So I was fortunate enough after coming back to be taken in by the, the Division of Colorectal Surgery. And I remember going to the office of uh, Dean uh, Bert Roas, and he was still the secretary of the college. He was not yet Dean. And it's interesting because there were four consultants then. Uh, Dr. Maxano, Carlos Maxano, was retiring that same year. Dr. Gutierrez was the de Department of Surgery chair. Dr. Chrysostomo was assistant to the director of the hospital, Philippine General Hospital, while Dean Bert Rojas was the secretary of the college. So when I sat down before him and I said, sir, I think I want to uh, come back to the division uh, instead of going to La Salle, the, 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 my original plan of teaching in, in De La Salle, he gave me a big smile and said, sure. And I knew, I knew they needed help. I knew they needed a scut man to do all the work, and that's what I did. I went back and did all the scut work, and it was really very heavy days to me. Uh, we put up the surgery research unit, which still stands. Um, we got our first endorectal ultrasound, which I did some research on. We started the MDT and the neoadjuvant tre treatment planning process. I was fortunate enough to get a scholarship to the ACS. Uh, where I was able to visit Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center and uh, opening my eyes again to the developments in colorectal surgery that were happening at that time. Very exciting developments. In fact, the, 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 the fellow who turned after me was Robert and for some reason we, we, re, we already clicked since then and um, when he went back to his own mother hospital, the Jose Reyes, he also started working on uh, TME and um, together we went to, in, to England uh, basing stones and attended the workshop of uh, Bill Hill and Brendan Moran and came back converts. Uh, so uh, we started the um, TME programs that we could for the colorectal society and um, this is one of the comprehensive workshops we did. It's an old uh, poster. Um, if you look at the specimens there, this is interesting. This is how good Robert was. So, so aside from the surgical technique, because the pathology was, the, path, the, the pathology folks were not as uh, in tune with our developments, Robert would cut the specimens himself, uh, ink them, ink them first, then cut them, and take pictures and try to understand the, con the, the, the context of circumferential section margins. He would send pictures of his specimens to basic stokes for verification. And this is one of those pictures there where he was doing that. Uh, we also went to Japan to learn more about lateral pelvic nodes. So really very exciting times for Robert and me. Um, 
Aside from TME, we developed the laparoscopic program, and I'd like to thank Michael Lee over and over again for coming over to, to help us with uh, developing that. And here are some of the older slides uh, where our numbers started growing, as well as how we changed uh, colorectal training because of the need to, 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 to um, really tighten the training of the fellows in laparoscopic surgery. It was not easy to start laparoscopic surgery. The picture on the left shows you what, what kind of equipment we had, uh, which is why for many, many years, even if we were doing that, we weren't showing our videos. Because it would be so obvious that the equipment was less than ideal. Uh, as mentioned, Robert and I started the, the first robotics. Um, we have a lot to say about it now, but now is the, <laughs> not the venue. But more for this conference, as Robert mentioned, we decided in 2010 to start the first uh, PSCRS convention. Um, before that, we were always under the Philippine College of Surgeons and the coffers of the society never grew. The first time I took over as treasurer, we had 36,000 pesos. And when we did this uh, first uh, convention, it was quite, quite scary because we didn't know if it would be successful, and I owe a lot a debt of gratitude to our ASEAN friends who came over free of charge just to help us get it started. Uh, I, I think you see them there. I, I won't I won't mention them, but I can read <laughs> to in the small print. But uh, we did hold the the sixth ASEAN Society of Colorectal Surgeons meeting in 2012, and again. We're very thankful for our CN uh, friends to have come over to support us for this. Other than that, I got another scholarship uh, out of the blue for the NISQIT, which I didn't know what it was, the National Surgical Quality Improvement Program, where I met Sonia Ramamurthy, uh, uh, who's, in the, who's with us today in the audience. And that's when I got to understand fully the issue of quality. Um, so much so that when I got home, I got one of our hospitals to enroll in the program. The only hospital to enroll in Asia at the time. Uh, and uh, if you look, uh, the, the most important thing about quality is to measure, to measure it. And if you look at the graph on the uh, lower part, that's actually the data of the hospital. And I, I'm proud to say it's within median you know, rather than, than less than median. We also found out about ERAS. We launched the ERAS program. Again, it's a, it's a quality program. I got the hospital. Two hospitals are now in, enrolled in the program, um, PGH and Medical City. And again, these are data that shows you how the quality of your surgery is undergoing. So understanding more about quality, uh, and I'll just slide, show this slide because it's something I'm, I'm trying to advocate now for the uh, Philippine College of Surgeons and um, uh, PSCRS. Uh, while we may be good in structures of care, processes of care, it's in health outcomes that we need to really start the ball rolling on. There has to be a feedback loop of a quality so that there's constant improvement. And, and many of the people in the audience are trainees or young consultants and if you look at my own journey through colorectal surgery, it's mostly been my own skills development through the decades, uh, all the way up to high tech, with uh, Ankoy Lopez uh, uh, helping me out there and, and leading the way for the country. But as I reach this progressive development of skills, you start understanding how, one, you need to work as teams, Two, you need to work as better teams with your medical oncologists and radiation oncologists in MPT. Three, how errors and quality is also systems and programs. Uh, and then you need to understand patients and patient-centered outcomes as well as value-based care. So it's really a progression of understanding how you're not alone, you're not a single entity, and there's a whole system that you need to work on. Understanding that, we put up the PCS Cancer Commission in 2019, of which I still lead. And when I started it, I wanted to really just put in the issue of quality and coordination between the different specialties. The uninteresting thing happened because uh, as we were doing that, 
we talked to the patient groups that were lobbying for the NICALO, the National Integrated Cancer Control Act. And we got to understand a little more about them, the patients, no? And, and how in the move to fight against cancer, aside from hearing them out, you need a whole of society approach. You need a whole community approach. And one of my last few slides, I'll have to show a video because I can't capture it all and I want you to understand how that is. So this is the last um, summit we had just a few weeks ago. And by showing it, I just want to show you that it's not just us colorectal surgeons, it's not just medical doctors that need to just talk about cancer, but how we need to talk about to, to government, to leader, government leaders, to financiers, to insurance, and to patients. This gathering marks a significant milestone in our ongoing efforts to address the challenges of cancer in our country. So maraming maraming salamat sa dedication and commitment nyo sa ating laban. Together, let us work towards a future where cancer no longer holds such a devastating impact on the lives of our fellow Filipinos. Nobody should be left behind. So we have earmarked 55 million pesos, some of that the cervical cancer plus breast cancer screening happens this year as we target 3 million women for cervical and breast cancer screening. It is important to shift towards prevention for cervical cancer and early diagnosis for both breast and cervical cancers. And I always say we work together against COVID, now we work together against cancer. What binds us together with government is our shared goal of providing access to affordable cancer care for every Filipino. Units and we're very honored and grateful na narito po yung pinaka prime mover natin. Sila po ang nagpo-provide or tinitiyak po nila na meron tayong essential, responsive, inclusive, and equitable health services. As your city mayor, I am 100% committed to fighting for families and patients battling cancer. Kaya po natin ito basta sama-sama nagtutulungan. When the doctor told me I had cancer, I cannot sleep. I told myself, ilang taong pa kaya buhay ko? What will I do tomorrow? There was early detection. Napaayos ko na po ito at I'm now cancer free. Ako'y nagpapasalangan. And I commit to you, we will do this again for cancer. Together we can build a future where cancer is no longer a death sentence, but a manageable and treatable condition. Dahil sa bagong Pilipinas, bawat buhay mahalaga. Maray po sila. Surgery is important to us, but there's also a bigger community out there 
and uh, something we need to, to reach out to. Uh, let's go back to the word mediocrity. Uh, medi comes from the Latin word medius, meaning middle. And uh, uh, ocris, meaning rugged mountain, literally translated, it means to settle halfway to the summit of a difficult mountain. It's a compromise of abilities and potential, a negotiation between the drive to excel and the biological urge to settle for the most comfortable option. Uh, as I look at the generation of colorectal surgeons now um, gathered here, um, I hope you've seen that you're actually in, a, when you finish your training, you're actually in, in a much better place than we were when we were training. There's something to be said about that. So I'll end the slide here by, by this saying, our quest for excellence is building on our mediocrity. And when you end your careers as excellent surgeons, hopefully it will be the mediocrity by which the other generation that follows you will build on. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone for this honor. In behalf of the PSCRS, we'd like to thank Dr. Rojas, this year's Porfirio Resho Memorial Lecture. And it gives us great pride to be carrying the torch. Um, I'll be presenting this plaque of appreciation to Dr. Manuel Francisco Tanyada Rojas. Ladies and gentlemen, Rami Rojas.